Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. The only place Satan can stop you is the wisdom of men. And that's where he attacks. I prayed for a lady and I said, let's agree in prayer that the Father will breathe into you the breath of life and you will conceive. And we agreed. Then she came the next month. I said, oh. I said, what's the problem? So I saw my period. Ah, I said, you ruined everything. I said, you have put your faith in the wisdom of men. Who cares whether you see your period or not? Your faith should not be in that system that fails. Even ordinary watching, there's this medical channel. Um, there's this medical channel. It's not geographic. It's one something. Well, the strange deliveries and they see women. There's a lady who was pregnant for eight, a seventh month. It was in the seventh month. She went to play basketball. She jumped and collapsed. And they rushed her to the hospital. And the doctor said, she said, most pregnant. The mother said, it's not possible. I've been living with her in the house. She's been seeing her message every month. How can that be? You were depending on the wisdom of men. It fails. It fails. One went into labor and didn't know she was pregnant. Oh, you don't watch it. It happened. We see. Didn't know she was pregnant. Go to the hospital, say you're pregnant. Say, what? But I've been seeing my men says, that's the wisdom of men. God said, don't put your faith in it. Put your faith in the wisdom of God that sometimes makes foolishness the wisdom of men. We said Satan attacks the procedure of that wisdom. And while you believe that you're pregnant, you start seeing your menses. Then he tells you, you are not pregnant. If you agree with him, the Bible says, if two shall agree, as touching anything on earth, he didn't say if two Christians, if two, whether spirits and human, it doesn't matter. If two shall agree on earth, if you agree with Satan, that's the end of that pregnancy. So he tells you, no, you're not pregnant, you're bleeding. Right? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So Satan uses the wisdom of men to damage people's faith so that they can no longer receive from God. So God is saying, now we will go through the wisdom of men. It's one of the procedures. And there's nothing wrong in it. But God says, don't put your faith in it. All right? You can go through a surgery. It's the wisdom of men. It's okay. Don't put your faith in it. You can take drugs. It's the wisdom of men. Don't put your faith in it. Put your faith in God who can make the drugs work. Am I communicating? Put your faith in God who is the chief surgeon himself. Who worked on Adam. And when Adam woke up, he didn't complain of any pain. Despite the sewing back. The chief great surgeon. The first to clone a human being. They're still trying to clone if is a clone, God did not breathe into Eve. Eve was cultured from stem cells from Adam. Bible says he brought out the ribs, cultured it, but he didn't take time. It was supernatural. Whoa! Eve appeared. He didn't breathe into Eve. He didn't form Eve from the from the ground. So Eve is a clone. <laughs> He's just trying to clone. Four thousand years. God did the first cloning. Four thousand years ago. Jesus, the first botanist, the first pharmacist, the first general practitioner when he prescribed figs for King Hezekiah. The first mention it in medicine is number one. Anything, any med, I tell people, doc, that's why I don't, I have respect for the medical practice. One day, a sister said, I don't want to do a CS. I don't have no more delivery. I said, no, I won't pray for that. I said, follow the doctor's advice. I said, you have nothing to worry. I said, after the CS, you look healthier than those who pushed. <laughs> and she looked healthier than those who didn't push. By the third day, when they were visiting, even the people were looking tired, she was up like this, going up and down. Third day. 
<laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 4. God is saying the church should begin to exhibit faith in the systems, in his wisdom. That's what he used. And you know what? The Satan doesn't understand that wisdom. The Bible says, had the devil known, he would not have crucified the Lord of glory. How did a being on the cross save your life? If you can explain it, then explain how a seed can lengthen your lifespan. How do you explain someone wants to give birth? Bring a seed, they drop it, and they deliver it. Sometimes the doctor says, this is the best we've done in 30 years. How do you explain? The same doctor. The same doctor. What, has, what did you do different? And you just dropped a seed. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. How do you explain drop a seed and you don't have miscarriage? The, these things causing the miscarriage are still there. The fibroid is there. I told somebody, I said, if you drop the seed and you are resting, something is wrong with you. You must go to work. Our sister dropped the seed. She was sewing with manual, manual um, machine. It was shaking her body. Vibrating. Then after a long time, she started feeling pain. Then we tell her rest a bit because the rule is if you're feeling pain, you're tired, rest. When you're okay, resume your work. If they constrict you to sleep, then you're not a partaker of this grace. If you're a partaker of this grace, how do you explain? We don't even know whether the hole has gone or the hole is not there. What we know is that you will leave. And that thing will have no effect on you. So the hole may still be in the heart, <coughs> but it has no effect on her. It's an anointing that has never been on earth before. And I call on people, come and partake of this grace. It's never been. It doesn't exist. The great men of God on the earth don't have this. I make bold. If Paul said, if I will boast, I will boast in Christ Jesus. I have the keys of death in my hand. Death knows me personally. <laughs> Glory. Glory, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. How do you tell somebody? So, and they sow, and they leave. And the one that refuses to sow dies. The same way you can explain how they nailed him to the cross. It's called the wisdom of God. How it saves me. I just believe it. I can't explain it. I like that song. I can't explain it. I don't deserve it, but I can't explain it. The Bible calls it foolishness to the Greeks who seek knowledge. It cannot be understood. It cannot be analyzed. Then, to show you, when she kept sewing, that year, she sold her television. Said, that's what we have best. And gave it. It was even a struggle. I didn't even know I was in the house. I just got to the car. I saw television on the back seat. How did it get there? I said, it's a seed. I said, nope. They said, it's too late. It's too late. It's too late. I said, okay, I can argue. Jiggery, 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 jiggery. Ah, ah. That's what has taken babies out. No baby can survive with that. It's not possible. We took her to the gynae, experienced. He said, are you doing strenuous work? He said, oh, you have to stop it. All. Immediately. <laughs> he said, yes, sir. After she left, continue jiggery, jiggery. <laughs> Said I have clothes to deliver and gave birth. Then the second pregnancy came. We prayed. There was no seed. She ended up in the hospital for evacuation. Then the third pregnancy came. They brought the seed. They said she has what we call placenta previa. <laughs> I'm not a doctor, but I know sometimes because I've been in and out of that system. <laughs> They say placenta previa. For four months, you are bleeding. They keep them in the hospital and they put buckets under them because blood is constantly dropping. Meanwhile, with placenta previa, she was going about. I said, You help me get this. Say, yes, Pastor. 
Let me get that. <laughs> she was going up and down. When she went to the hospital, they did this case. Say, placenta previa. The chief consultant said, looked at her and said, you're okay, sir, I'm okay. <laughs> say, can't be. The doctor, the Muslim, oh, Jesus. They're all ministers of God. Whether it's a Muslim or a Hindu, it's a minister of God. He came and said, this is a time bomb. I said, no, this is not a time bomb. He said, oh, you people have come again. This is a time bomb. She said, I said, she's been like this since four months. I said, it's not possible. I said, but I told you, sir, in the, in the room, you forgot. I said, if you told me, would have put her here on the bed. I said, no wonder God blocked your ears when I told you. <laughs> <laughs> then they said, we must hold her down. I said, have you done that to you? Want to help me? Say no. Say ah. Say sir, please. She will come tomorrow. Say ah. It's okay. I'll sign. Let her come tomorrow. <laughs> Quickly, let me go and do this. Do this. She says she had to supply some clothes. Do this. Finished everything. Then came the next day. He called me at two. All the doctors are running from me to do this. Yes. They said I'm a time bomb. <laughs> when it was five, the Muslim doctor said, Hey, don't run from that woman. She's a miracle sitting down. Go and do nothing will happen. That's a Muslim doctor. They say she must bring pints of blood because placenta brevia is a breached baby. Gave birth, looking healthier than those that came to visit her in the hospital. It's called. What made the difference? That seed, that faith in the wisdom of God. Kalibo Shandi, Mosakata Yamanga Takia, Kondo Lobo Hoshete Yamanga, Kandele Kete, Shanda Yaboko, Kondo Loboko Sekete. I notice those of you who have been given, none has been sick. Not even headache. Is it not one of you, your mom went to the hospital? They said BP was three or something. Three or something over one and something. A young man, his own rose to one night. He said, blanked out. I said, you are not connected to this grace. The issue is not your BP rising. The issue is that you blacked out. Your BP can be 350 over 190 or 200. You should be walking normally. <laughs> <laughs> so the doctor looked at her and said, how are you? How come you're still alive? I said, I'm alive and well. Say any headache? No. Nope. Pain? No. Very normal. 380. Over 200 and something. That is serious. That man shouldn't be alive. He said, I had no pain, no headache. It's a, oh, sorry. That's our mister that did it in the, when he was in Shell. When they said you have to do uh, the medical checkup. Yes, he said, how come you are alive? He said, I don't know. <laughs> what did you do? I don't know. It's called the wisdom of God. How did they attain it? By sowing. Then people with war and something have stroke and die. What's the difference? The wisdom of God. He says it will bring the wisdom of men to naught. Praise Jesus. Amen. Romans 4 from verse 13. The next testimonies I'll be using will be yours. Amen. You know, when the lady told me the fiber was cancerous, you know why I told her to ignore it? Because she has sown the right seed. No, we have a sister in the house. <laughs> no, they're fighting over tight. She gives 20% every month. 20% what? Every month. One month she gave 10%. When I saw it, me, I don't monitor finances. I just kept quiet. I was going, je, je. The next one I had, they were in the hospital. Went to the hospital. I said, you know why you are here? She said, yes. <laughs> I said, listen to it. Does it. Is this not like a scam? Your protection is 20%. And your guarantee of good health is 20%. You drop it, you become like every other person, subject to every other disease. You raise it back to 20%. I've not had any calls since then. I challenge anyone out there, whatever they call it, cancer, give. 
If you give the right seed, if you die, I will return times seven to your family. The right seed. That's why we don't put account number up. I don't want just anybody to give because there are people who reject their seeds. Go and solve your problem through prayer and fasting. <laughs> Praise God. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Romans 4 from verse 13. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which were of the law be heirs. Oh, sorry, let me pause a little bit. I remember our sister, our interview was not fantastic. The interview is the wisdom of men. Good interview, they take you. Bad interview, they don't take you. All the people who have gotten jobs all had bad interviews. <laughs> Lord, make it clear, this grace functions without the wisdom of men. It brings the wisdom of men to naught. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's so many things. <laughs> I just have to... Oh, Jesus, I just have to, um... okay, verse 14. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace, to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom we believed, even God, who quickened the dead, called the things that be not as though they already were in existence. Who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Be not weak in faith. He did not consider his body now dead, by which the wisdom of men works. Neither did he consider... The deadness of Sarah's womb, which the wisdom of men works. But what? He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised was able to perform, therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. And God was trying to make Abraham understand this. That you can give birth normally. You know, the Bible makes it clear when the wisdom of God was in operation about Jesus' death, Satan had no clue. And you could see that when Sarah was to take him, Satan had no clue. He doesn't know what to do. He's confused. He's, he, he doesn't understand. He doesn't know where to turn to because he can only understand the wisdom of men and his own wisdom. He does not know or understand the wisdom of God. So in this situation, Satan had nothing to attack because here, the womb is already dead. Now God said, it doesn't have to leave. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Surulere Lagos. Get a copy today. There was a lady many years back, she too had fibroid and she had a baby, they suffered a miscarriage. And then when she told me, I said, okay, she did some medical tests. They said it's a fibroid. And um, they said she should remove the fibroid. I said, no, when you're done with childbearing, we remove the fibroid. They said, where the fibroid is positioned, we'll kill the baby. I said, no, it's the spirit of death that kills the baby, not fibroid. Fibroid will only make the baby uncomfortable. Let him just go through a little discomfort for nine months. He will have all the comfort, the toys, the, um, the cartoons when it comes out. That's okay. So she took in. And she did what ought to be done according to the wisdom of God. <laughs> Glory! Hallelujah! They said as the baby grew, the fibroid grew. At four months, she looked like 12 months pregnancy. 
big because the fiber was big. So I, I called the fiber and I said, I command you fiber, break to pieces and come out. The fiber split to four and went to the left, to right, behind and in front of the baby. So it was growing and choking the baby in. I said, oh my goodness. So she went to England and they told her, as a matter of emergency and urgency, they have to evacuate both the baby and the fiber. Otherwise, she would die. That's in England. She called me crying. I said, you have satisfied the condition of this grace. <laughs> Glory! Hallelujah! You no, know, they said the last enemy. I thought it's Jesus that will conquer death in the spirit. No. He said the last enemy to be destroyed is death. He said, I've given you the keys of death. Destroy it. He said, I've taught you how to immune from death in the living. He said, you finish the first phase. He said, the next phase, you must learn how to exhume somebody who has been buried and bring them back to life. Because death manifests in seven ways. Stroke is a manifestation of death. It's the death of a part. So when someone has a stroke, it's not that they will die, but the chances that they may die. Because the manifestation of death. How have we solved it? Seeds. Your man has stroke on a wheelchair. So what do I do? I said, I don't need to travel to come and pray with you. Just so give. Do you know? <laughs> when I went to see our, our sister's father in the hospital, they said his BP shot to 190. So it was hysteria. They said the drug was, it was you know, there's the issue of the cancer and the high near. So they rushed him to the hospital. When I got to the hospital, what am I supposed to do? To quickly lay hands and pray, right? Yeah. Is that not what I'm supposed to do? Yeah. What did I do? I said, this is my account number. <laughs> Does that not look like a thief? Yeah. Somebody's in the hospital. Hysteria. Die! Then they sent for a pastor. He comes. What is the pastor supposed to do? In the name of Jesus. But Shali, Abi, if I was doing that, you would say, praise God, daddy will live. The way this man is praying, he's even jumping, his feet can't touch the ground. In the name, and I'm shaking. He said, yes. Then I put oil. Sprinkle oil. It's called, um, what do you call it? Realties. Kali, Shali. I said, you have the account now. I said, this is it. Pay it in immediately, and I left. <laughs> you know, my upbringing is disturbing this grace because we were trained not to look to anybody for anything. That's where we were trained. Our parents traveled to Jebu for a funeral. They left us in our uncle's house. They forgot to tell us to eat. Myself and my two senior sisters, when it was Friday night, they brought food. It was even yam flour and mala. They served us. We said, we're not eating. They said, why? So our parents didn't tell us to eat. Saturday morning, they had to travel back to Jebu to get our mother to come back and tell us to eat. Then we ate. So that training is disturbing this oppression. That's why I have lost young people that ought not to die. Because when I talk to them about sowing and they show the slightest extension, I withdraw. Let it not be as if I'm interested in your money. It has cost lives. I said, I won't lose this man. I said, pay it in. Next morning, I said, Pastor, I'll pay. I said, I've seen their lot. God bless you. I said, when I come to see that, I said, no need to come. I'll come later. It's okay. That night, he went into a coma. He called me 2 a.m. He said, that is breathing, but not moving. I said, he's in a coma. I said, what do we do? I said, in the morning, get the doctors to attend to him. He said, are you coming? I said, there's no need. <laughs> Glory. That now looks like a chief's scammer. You collected money. Somebody's in coma. Now you can't go. I don't need to. It's when there's no seed, we're running up and down. In the morning, they say he has come out of coma. I say, how is it? They say he's eating. By evening, they say he's back in coma. Say they gave him shots of uh, glucose. They say his blood sugar was too low. Later again, they say it's out of coma. I said, what's it? They say it's gisting. <laughs> then later again in night, they say he slipped into the coma the third time. This time, he said in coma, he saw himself traveling. That's death now. That's another manifestation of the spirit of death, coma. When somebody is in coma, that's the spirit of death in operation. Said he was 
traveling, a man appeared on the road. Say, where are you going? Get back. Say, oh, and I love where we say, get back. They paid dues on your behalf. Return. Call him yes. Say, he woke up. The doctor said to them, say, he has never seen. Now, when he woke up, he was in the world with another person. As he woke up, the other man went into coma and never came or died that night. He should have died. 20,000. The credit man account. Say, hey, daddy had 10,000. Say, I tend to it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. I, that's Alleluia. calm. Is that, not, is that not like a higher lean? Eh? I wonder why. Maybe the daddy freezer has not heard about me. <laughs> they hear about me. I need them to hear about me. So I can be on Facebook and on Twitter and the nations of the world. They just put my face. This karma. And as they, as, and I know God. As I put my face, the scammer, as those who are sick, see God says, so to that man. I said, glory be to God. I need the daddy freeze to advertise me more. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. The scammer, they just put my face. And God will just make sure that the people seeing it are those in major crisis. And they'll be telling, oh yeah, so, 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 quickly, 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 get the account number. Oh yeah, oh yeah, so, so, so. I need him to do the advert for me. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. The doctor said, three comas in 24 hours. He has never seen anyone. So the man went next in the same room, two beds, went into coma and died. When I went to check him, I said, Daddy, how are you doing? He said, I'm doing fine. He said, you cool? He said, yeah, I'm cool. So I'll see you. Take it. So long. He said, yeah, pastor. Hmm. The seed is speaking. How do you explain that? And so God told Abraham, now that your organs are dead, and Sarah's womb is dead, it's time to see the wisdom of God. For those of you who have sown, I bring you good news. Your seeds have matured. Your fruits are ready. They're in your bands. Let me tell you how the anointing works on me. If I look at you, there's a sister of ours. She'll be giving birth very soon. Before she came to tell me she was, but every time I see her, I feel as if she wants to tell me, oh, Pastor, there's something I want to tell you. Then she walked past. It's okay. Then I'll say, there's something I want to tell you. Then she walked past. There's something I want to tell you. She walked past. When I see a call on the phone, instantly I know what has happened before I pick it up. When I saw one of her sisters on the call, I said, hey! I come home. It has happened! It does happen. But when I pick the call, he said, Pastor, I want to talk about your devotion. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Praise God. And the Lord said, that expectation is what I have done. That is sure and sure and sure. And I tell her, I say, this person wants to tell me three things. There are three things. So every time I see the call, hey, I'll say, it has happened again. Where you go? Hey, Pastor. And I was service to my What's going to happen? Because that's the way the anointing works. Do you know what I've been having, expecting from all of you? Do you know what has been coming, expecting from all of you? Breakthrough news. Amen. News of monumental breakthroughs. Amen. That's the way the anointing works. Each time I'm expecting something, when somebody is to die, each time I go to check somebody in the hospital and the person is about to die, when I approach the hospital, I stop. I, then I take a deep breath and say, oh, I hope I still see him. And then I come. Well, I say, praise God, he's still there. That means he's about to die. 99 percent, 100%, they all died. Except those that sold. When they're in the hospital, say, don't worry about that one. Oh, they'll call me, he's bubbling all over the place now. They always leave. Well, it works with my phone and it works with contact. If I see somebody, I say, oh, she wants to tell me she's just been promoted. Hey, Pastor, I want to ask. I need them. I need you to pray for me. My father is trying. Oh. Then I pray for the father and he goes, nine times out of ten, a hundred percent, not nine times out of ten, a hundred and one percent, they're going to tell me they are promoted. And the Lord said, your mind 
you have to protect it because it is working with the anointing. That each time, you know, I was telling a lady some time ago, and it's been happening before. Each time I would say, ah, this lady should have been promoted. This lady should have been promoted. Each time I would say, she should have told me she's promoted. She should have told me. She's... So about two weeks ago or something, about a month ago, I said, come. How far about your promotion? She said I was promoted. I said, ow. I kept saying, I kept feeling she wanted to tell me she's been promoted. And then she got promoted. That's the way the mind works with the anointing. So if I'm expecting something negative, it means evil is around the corner. Now, let me tell you, I've been expecting good all around me. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.